Hey plant gang, uh, this is actually one of my favorite native trees, Robinia pseudacacia, the black locust. We see this uh, where I'm at right now uh, in eastern Tennessee on the sides of our roadways. Uh, it has a beautiful compound leaf that's alternately arranged on the stem. It's got a beautiful uh, texture. Uh, there's great cultivars of this plant that can be used in the landscape. Uh, great kind of furrowing bark right here that's beautiful. Uh, one that we don't see planted in the residential uh, lawn very much. One that is uh, maybe appreciated from afar more than anything. Uh, beautiful uh, white blooms that cascade in the spring uh, from uh, the branches and really cover the entire plant with the foliage. Uh, beautiful plant, uh, one you should definitely know. Beautiful bark uh, and one that we're going to learn how to identify here today. So here we're looking at uh, the foliage again, again alternately arranged. This is a compound leaf, uh, just leaflets up here. Uh, against this bark right here, uh, now black locust can get 30 foot high, a little bit higher than that, 25, 30, 35 foot wide in some cases. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, this is a native uh, to uh, the eastern United States. Uh, but considered an invasive in the Midwestern United States. And so uh, you really have to know if you were going to plant this tree uh, what, uh, what you're getting into. Uh, tiny little spines at the base of uh, where the bud is completely covered uh, by this compound leaf. So again, Robinia pseudocasia, the black locust, hardy from zones three through eight. Uh, the sizes, you could put 30 to 50 foot high, you could put uh, 20, to 20, 20 to 35 foot wide. It does have a tendency in some landscape situations to sucker, which really leads me to the landscape tr tip. This tree is not generally recommended for the home landscape because of suckering and potential for invasiveness in that landscape. 